Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing the discovery of what seems to be the most powerful solar storm, or geomagnetic storm, that happened over 9000 years ago. A storm that nobody ever thought would be possible. And the discovery itself is somewhat unnerving, but also teaches us a little bit more about our own sun. Specifically that our sun is definitely a little bit more unpredictable than we originally thought. And so today we're going to discuss this particular discovery, what exactly the scientists were able to find and how they found it, and more importantly, what all of this means for us living here on Earth in our relatively complex civilization. But this particular discovery is somewhat unexpected. Mostly because, well, for one, we always thought that our sun is relatively mild. As a matter of fact, some of the recent studies comparing our sun to other stars, such as a typical red dwarf, Established that unlike these other stars that seem to possess a lot of really powerful flares, our sun doesn't seem to do that as much. Actually, none of the flares detected from these other star systems have ever been seen produced by the sun. And many of these flares and these storms detected from various star systems would be actually quite catastrophic to planet Earth if they happen here in the solar system. But despite of all of these assumptions, it's still really important for us to learn more about our sun in order to understand if something like this is possible. In other words, if it's possible for our sun to produce an extremely powerful flare that can actually be really detrimental to life on the planet. And because of the extremely accurate observations in the last few years, the scientists have already solved several mysteries in regards to our own sun. For example, not so long ago, one of the teams has finally solved the mystery of these unusual shadows that are usually seen in between various magnetic lines formed on the Sun. And turns out all of this is actually because of the fluid interactions that seem to happen inside the solar corona, which despite being very magnetic, also seems to act like a typical fluid. With all of these interactions potentially being responsible for then producing a lot of other effects we still don't understand. And one such effect is actually what we are really concerned with the so-called coronal mass ejections, and more specifically, the powerful emissions sometimes known as solar particle event. Something that usually happens following the coronal mass ejection, when a tremendous amount of highly charged particles suddenly gets accelerated and then strikes our planet with a tremendous force, in the process ionizing our atmosphere and actually causing quite a lot of chemical changes in the atmosphere as well. Which also is a type of an event that's usually observed from these distant stars, which we also believe might be responsible for stripping the planet of its atmosphere and eventually causing the planet to be completely uninhabitable. But these events producing these extremely energetic particles are relatively rare. Out of all coronal mass ejection events detected so far, only approximately 1% of them has produced these very powerful emissions. Although how they're produced is still not entirely clear. What is clear though, is that something right here in the corona of the sun ends up accelerating these particles to tremendous speeds, giving them so much energy that first of all they end up reaching our planet in just a few hours, and second of all, giving them so much energy that they end up penetrating the atmosphere and increasing the overall radiation around the planet itself, which naturally creates extremely dangerous conditions for any astronaut and for any satellite in this particular region. Although here, I guess, it's kind of important to make a small side note. So when we talk about solar flares, coronal mass ejections, or other solar particle events that sometimes are referred to by other names, these are actually not the same at all. All of them are completely separate events. But more often than not, they do happen around the same time. So for example, a typical coronal mass ejection, which is essentially when the sun suddenly throws out a huge amount of mass, which is what you see right there in top left, when the sun suddenly throws out a relatively large amount of highly charged particles, which then have a tendency to fly across space and potentially strike planets, could also be associated with a solar flare and could also then produce so-called solar particle events, which usually happen when all of this mass is then re-accelerated to tremendous velocities. And depending on the original strength of the coronal mass ejection, you'll generally also get much stronger solar particle events as well. And so there's definitely some correlation between all of these events. And because of this, it becomes possible to maybe measure some of these events historically. In other words, by looking at how, for example, the atmosphere was changed in the past, and by discovering certain types of isotopes that are only produced during such events, it becomes possible to determine the strength of previous geomagnetic storms and obviously the previous coronal mass ejections. 
And one of the most recent such events, the more powerful events, was back in 2003. It's known as the Halloween Storms. A geomagnetic storm that left large parts of Europe completely without electricity and also ended up damaging the electric grid in South Africa. But in this case, it also included a solar particle event with a lot of highly charged protons striking the atmosphere. Which means that during that time, you probably would not want to be in the air and specifically in space, and you would not want to be an astronaut. And speaking of astronauts, back in August of 1972, there was another such event, actually an extremely powerful SAP. And it just so happens that completely by luck, the Apollo missions happened in December of that year. In other words, the Apollo 17 mission that ended up landing on the moon missed this particular SCP by just a few months. And chances are, if the astronauts were in space at that time, they would actually have received an extremely dangerous dose of radiation, potentially even a fatal dose of radiation. But that's of course some of the more modern events that happened in the last few decades. As a matter of fact, one of the more powerful events in the modern times was back in 1956. The event was powerful enough to dramatically change some of the isotopes in the atmosphere of our planet. And essentially, this is how the scientists today are able to find out if there were any more powerful events sometime in the past. For example, by either looking at various tree rings, or more commonly, by looking at various isotopes trapped inside a typical ice core, and then by measuring the differences in various uh, isotopes, usually focusing on things like carbon, chloride, and beryllium, it becomes possible for the scientists to determine if there was any powerful events in the past as well. Specifically because these powerful emissions, these very powerful particle events, usually end up producing quite a lot of isotopes in the atmosphere, which are then captured either by the trees or by the ice cores, and can be used to determine the overall strength of a typical geomagnetic storm. But what's really intriguing and somewhat interesting is that that particular event in 1956 that we consider to be the strongest was not strong enough to be captured by either the trees or the ice cores, even though it did change the overall production of certain types of beryllium by at least 5% in our atmosphere. Or in other words, none of the powerful geomagnetic storms in the last few decades were powerful enough to affect the isotopes that are usually find in ice cores or tree rings. But some of the previous studies in the last few years discovered at least three such events in ice cores or inside the tree rings of ancient trees that definitively showed a dramatic increase in certain isotopes which could only be caused by some kind of a stellar event, very likely a geomagnetic storm that created these solar energetic particles. But all of these events happened quite a long time ago. There was one in 993 CE, basically over a thousand years ago, there was another one, pretty big one, in 774, and there was another one approximately two and a half thousand years ago in 660 BC. And all of these events were pretty powerful, powerful enough to leave a mark, and today they are believed to have been at least 10 times more powerful than the famous Carrington event that we discussed in one of the previous videos, somewhere right there, or in the description below. But now, the scientists using ice cores found in Greenland discovered something else somewhat unexpected and somewhat unusual. The most powerful such event ever recorded that seems to have happened during the so-called solar minimum. And this is really strange because, well, as you might already know, our sun has cycles, it has the minima and the maxima. The maxima is when we usually expect the most powerful geomagnetic storms to happen. The minima is usually when there's really not much activity on a solar surface and not a lot of magnetic reconnection, which usually produces solar storms. Yet this unusual storm that happened approximately 9100 years ago seems to have increased the production of various isotopes associated with a typical solar energetic particle event a lot more than some of the previous storms, including the one in 774, suggesting that this is, of course, possibly the most powerful geomagnetic storm ever recorded, but the storm that seems to have unusually happened during a solar minimum, basically when the sun was not very active. Which also means that, unlike that previous study that I mentioned that sort of suggested our sun is not particularly active and is relatively mild, could have dramatically underestimated what our sun is capable of once in a while. Now obviously at the moment nobody really knows what exactly happened, how it happened, and what caused all of this, but because four such events, very powerful events, have been now discovered in the data from the last 10,000 years, it means that we definitely have to study this a little bit more, for one simple reason. 
If such an event were to happen today, it would have an absolutely catastrophic effect on everything we use today, everything from digital technology to even potentially dramatically reducing the ozone layer of our planet, causing a lot of other problems that come with that as well. On top of this, the changes in the atmosphere might also affect the climate on the planet for at least a few years. So these effects would have a profound effect on the entire planet. It would not be just felt by the technology, it would most likely affect a lot of things on the planet. And that means we have to study these events, understand them, and potentially find a way to prevent any damage these could cause to a lot of things around us. And luckily for us, NASA has been doing a pretty good job at that. A lot of different missions by NASA, including the Parker Solar Probe, are essentially meant to study our sun and to try to understand how to prevent these in the future. And so I guess for now, let's just hope that nothing major happens in the next few decades. But I guess until we learn more or until we discover something else about our sun, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out the relevant links in the description below, subscribe, maybe share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.